So here we are, back again with me saying cruisers are really strong. And I did a really bad job of my first video. Uh, I was a fairly negative, somewhat condescending video, and that's not really who I want to be on this channel. So instead of me just saying cruisers are strong and giving a relatively poor example with a few decent points, I think today we're going to look at how to play a cruiser to make it look very strong, okay? Because yes, you put a cruiser in a bad position, it's going to be bad. Uh, I saw a few comments saying, well, you never get yourself into crossfires, and your ships are never, uh, yeah, getting crossfired by multiple ships, therefore your examples don't count. And it is true, I'm rarely in a crossfire in my cruisers, and that is down to positioning. And that is all cruisers are, in my mind. It's good positioning because aiming is incredibly easy with these ships and the dam actually getting damage is not hard at all because high explosive is just so uh, consistent and fire damage is just insane these days. So today we're going to take a look at how I play cruisers. And step one is, of course, positioning early game. And I want to take a look at a couple maps, not all of them, but just a couple. And we'll go over some really good starting island positions and maybe some good island positions to rotate towards just to give you an idea of what you should be looking for when you start the game. So this is all you have to do to position your ship well. These white circles are good islands to take at the start of the match. Um, assuming, you know, you're aware of some of these more forward islands being a little bit more risky. Um, and understanding when to rotate off. These yellow islands are good islands to rotate off to. Let's say you lose a flank, go to one of these yellow islands as they push around, right? Um, this, this, These are just very common islands that I will go to in my cruisers and basically be guaranteed a good game. So this is hotspot, mountain range, very similar. There's some good islands all around these camps and some good rotator islands to rotate off to. North as well has a ton of islands to use. Um, very, very easy to get some good games in here. You just have to be aware of when to rotate away. And that basically means, what is the enemy team doing that spawned in the middle? Are they coming to your, your flank, or are they leaving your flank? And that basically determines whether you should rotate off, or hold position, maybe even push. Sea of Fortune, again, I'm not going to go over every map, but there's a ton of good islands here, right? And... Um, yeah, it's just really easy to play a cruiser in all these maps because there's just so many islands that you can use for early game positions, late game positions, as people push into you, for you to just spam over. It's very, very simple. Now, not every game is going to be simple, obviously, but this get, should give you a general idea of where you should be going in your cruisers and be patient with it, right? I've gone to one of the islands that I highlighted, and I'm just going to sit here for a long time, moving a little bit here and there to try and help our Shimakaze. But the main goal of sitting here is just being patient and shooting at anything that gets spotted that potentially could be pushing in here. Um, our Shimakaze, of course, is doing a very good job contesting the cap somewhat safely by reversing in. And I want to support him in that, so that's why I'm going to try and reverse and maybe get an angle if a destroyer pops up and starts fighting him, that sort of thing. We want to be able to help. And that's why a lot of these forward position islands, the white islands in that uh, little example I showed you of all the maps, the white highlighted ones, that is, they are good positions to take to help your destroyer early game, but also give you some reasonable cover against battleships, other cruisers, destroyers, that kind of thing. Obviously, when there's a carrier in the game, these islands become less useful, right? I wouldn't be spotted right now, but there is a carrier. So we do have to keep that in mind, and it is a Richt offense. This is a pretty rough game, right? Zhao is not the strongest tier 10 cruiser in the game. I would, in fact, say it's probably one of the worst tier 10 cruisers in the entire game, given the low HP pool, low DPM, and not a lot of utility bringing uh, to the table with this ship. And yet, we're still going to have a pretty insane game. But you can see already just how patient I'm being. I'm moving away. I am not charging in, trying to get damage early. Games generally last at least 10 minutes in this game. In this game, And uh, 
there's a lot of opportunities to get damage, so keeping yourself healthy early game is going to be a big deal for the later game. It allows you to play a lot more aggressive when there's fewer battleships, fewer ships in the game, fewer crossfires to get yourself into, and you can actually push up into some maybe more forward island positions. Maybe your team was able to push through on your flank, maybe you had to kite to the back of the map, but... Saving your health and trying to keep as much health into the late game is always going to be a good idea. So now that we've taken some damage and we're kind of away from the island that we were kind of hanging out at, I think it's time to turn around and try and come back to this island and maybe try and get a better position to help our destroyer. We don't really know where the enemy Shimakaze is, but it's possible our Shimakaze is going to get into a fight soon because we have seen the Holland on the other side of the map and it stands to reason that the Shimakaze could be on this flank. And I'm reasonably close to the Shima right now, but I'm not that close. A lot of the time when you're playing a cruiser like Zhao with decent concealment and really hard hitting guns, what you want to do is you want to put your concealment arc, your concealment radius there, match it and try and match it up with your friendly destroyer's concealment radius. So. When your friendly destroyer gets spotted, you get spotted at the same time, and that's going to give you the best chance to deal a massive blow to the enemy destroyer. So we're in an okay position right now. We're a little too close to the Shima, right? We know Shimakaze has 5.6 kilometer detect, I believe. So we're a little bit too close. Ideally, we would want to keep him. We would want to keep him maybe at seven kilometers, right, or eight kilometers away from our ship. And that would give us the best opportunity to not be detected until the Shimakaze detects the enemy destroyer. That is the best way, if you don't have radar, uh, to help your destroyer deal with an enemy DD, right? So you can see we're nearly there, right? We're basically at that threshold where the Shimas spotted each other and we're close enough that hopefully we can get a good blow. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't paying attention, so I shot one extra salvo at, I think, one of the battleships in the back. Which was a mistake by me, we could have had a massive hit on this Shimakaze, because Zhao guns do a lot of damage, unfortunately we missed. But, that's the general idea you should be searching for. Venezia is obviously the best example of this, Sap absolutely murders destroyers, so doing that is a great way to have a massive battle impact, even if you don't have radar, or maybe the best of armor to t push up and tank, that kind of thing in your cruisers. That's a really, really strong way to impact the game. Something you shouldn't be doing, in my mind, is pushing into a cap as a Wooster, and it's surrounded by a Hindenburg, a Thunderer, a Zhao, and a Yamato. That's probably not the best way to go about things, so that's why you gotta be patient. This Wooster was, honestly, doing a lot to hold up our team winning this flank by staying behind that island. He was applying pressure to our battleships, keeping them from pushing in, he was supplying radar support and AA support to his friendly destroyer, meaning it's very difficult to crack that side of the map, right? And because our cruisers, myself and the Hindenburg, have stayed a lot more passive, I think we'll probably end up winning this side just because of that. That Wooster goes down, and now we have a bit of an advantage over here. Our Shima no longer has to deal with radar, and our battleships no longer have to deal with the HE spam. And that's a huge, huge, huge win for our team. So playing passive is kind of the cruiser playstyle. That you just have to accept that you're not going to be able to push in all that often. Now something you should notice is the enemy republic is pushing down the five line. This is something I haven't quite noticed yet in this game and you can see I'm basically flat broadside to them. I'm not spotted at the moment. There, I finally noticed. <laughs> but it is a dangerous position to be in where you're just stationary in one of these positions broadside onto a battleship at long range because this can result in a dev strike for sure but i'm not getting spotted so it's kind of okay at the moment um but ideally we will want to angle to that republic or at least put an island between us and the republic that is one of the major ways you can mitigate a lot of damage as a cruiser is making sure you are angled to the entire enemy team 
and only shooting and opening yourself up to whatever ship is farthest on the flank. If I, instead of being angled the way that I was, and I had my guns on the other side, maybe my stern was towards the Republic, I would have been angled well to him and the Montana while I was shooting the Yamato, for example. Um, that is a very, very strong way. Now, I am doing the same thing, just bow in right now. You can see I'm well angled to the Republic and the Montana, and the Yamato is really the only thing that has my broadside. This is the goal of a lot of cruisers, is to open yourself up to the least amount of ships possible. You always want to keep your stern or your nose pointed in the direction of the majority of the enemy ships. Always trying to shoot the guy on the outside of a enemy's formation or whatever. That is going to be the best way to keep yourself safe if you don't have island cover to, you know, keep you undetected like I'm doing right now. Now circling back a little bit, I want to talk a little bit more about rotations because yes, it's well and all well and good. You can sit behind these islands that I've pointed out forever and, you know, you'll get some damage, but every once in a while you'll get overrun and you'll die or you'll your team will push through and you won't really be able to get much damage because you're sitting on these islands that I pointed out. So what you want to be constantly aware of is where the majority enemy team was. And that's where I say uh, in the beginning of this video, pay attention to where the middle forces go, right? Generally, there are two flank spawns and a mid spawn. The flank spawns ideally will go to their flanks and the mid guys will kind of spread out. Honestly, people don't push the middle because that's very dangerous, of course. So they either tend to um, float to one side or another. So pay attention to which side the enemy team mid guys are going towards and pay attention to where your team uh, middle guys are going towards. That'll give you an idea of which flank is strongest on your team and on the enemy team. Once you know where the enemy team is strong and where your team is strong, you can make a good decision on whether or not you should be playing aggressive or you should be playing more passive on your flank. For us, a lot of our team this game did end up going to the A flank. And that's why, part of the reason, I've been a little bit more passive. It was a relatively even split um, for the enemy team as well. So playing passive when it's even is obviously the best way. So we didn't really have to push here. But hypothetically, if the enemy team had all come to this C flank, right, all the guys in the middle came towards the C flank, which does happen quite a lot, um, you do want to be ready to get a, you know, be ready to escape, basically. Don't put yourself in a position where you're relying on your team backing you up on one of these islands, right? Let's say you're in a Stalingrad or a Moskva and you position yourself bow in on one of these islands. That's a great way to have a short game if the enemy team all pushes there. If the enemy team decides, you know, they want to go to the other flank, well, maybe you should be getting a little bit more aggressive trying to win your flank a little bit harder, especially if your mid guys are coming to your flank. Understanding where the enemy team is strong and where your team is strong and pay really paying attention to that will make your games go a lot better. And I think even just paying attention to where the strength of the enemy team is and where the strength of your team is, that'll get you into better mindsets in all your ships um, to play a little better. Give you ideas of, okay, maybe I should push, maybe I should play a little bit more passive. And sometimes the right answer isn't to push, even if you're on the strong side and there's very few enemies on their side. Because some of these maps are just impossible for cruisers to push in on. And in those scenarios, you should be thinking, okay, I need to rotate to the other side of the map where the enemy team is strong to try and stop their push. Because of course, that is where a lot of these cruisers are at their strongest. It's stopping battleships, other cruisers from pushing into them. Right? This is where Zhao is It's at its strongest, right? You can see we've already farmed 200,000 damage. We've got a ton of fires on these battleships. We've done a lot of work in our Zhao to stop these guys from pushing in. And sometimes the enemy team just won't push in. And you need to realize that it's probably because they're weak on that flank. And you should think about maybe rotating over to the stronger flank. Of course, cruisers in divisions can be very, very, very strong. And I think... Uh, my clanmate John the Ruthless here definitely demonstrated that. He was in a Worcester, uh, and he he and his divmate in the gearing 
uh, definitely pushed the enemy team back. You can see they're on the A, B line, right? Um, obviously, if you're in a division smoking up a Worcester at closer and closer uh, areas towards caps and towards the enemy team can be insanely, insanely, insanely powerful. But as a solo player, you really aren't going to be able to rely on your DDs to do that. And that's where playing on these islands and playing in a more passive look way, looking for where the enemy team is pushing, trying to stop those pushes, is going to result in more better cruiser games for you. So this is the kind of mindset that I have when I am playing cruiser. I'm constantly trying to find where the enemy team is pushing, go there and stop it, using the islands that I mentioned at the beginning. And generally, this results in some pretty solid games. Obviously, John had a monster of a game here, and probably is the reason we won. But uh, yeah, cruisers, not that hard once you understand the basic mechanics and what you should be doing in different scenarios. But that's most classes in this game anyway. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something. I hope you have a great day.